Hello, welcome to our 50 Questions Friday. This is Brian Besco at Twisted Sage Studios. And uh, this is our number seven of our uh, 50 Question Friday here. And hey, good morning. We've got people from all over the place here. So um, please do put in your questions here, either on the questions or the chat. We'll go through the question side first and we'll come back through the chat. Um, but to begin, let's uh, let's do our three breaths, if you so choose with me. Um, and we do the three breaths to go into the heart space, to ground, connect, come into alignment, move our consciousness into the heart space. You can do this exercise however you wish. You can do it in one breath. Um, I'll just walk you through the process that we go through. All right, here we go. So I like to close my eyes. Picture my physical heart where we carry our light, our soul's fire. And to me, it's most powerful when I take my light and just imagine dropping it down into the core of the earth, down into the heart of Mother Earth. And as I do, I take that deep breath in from the earth, right up through the body and into the heart. And the next breath is just connecting to soul, source, creator, God, and drawing in that breath of creation right into the heart. And the third breath of bringing in both earth and sky, as we'd call it, right into the heart Mixing those two lights together with your light and then sending them straight back out. So you are a column of light that is grounded, connected, and in the heart space. Awesome. So we have people here from all over the place. Georgia, Idaho, Tennessee, Austin, Texas, New Mexico, the UK. Awesome. Hey, thank you guys for being here today. So let's see, before I move on to doing the, the 50 questions and we'll start with the, uh, the ones that I have with email, I want to show you guys a couple of prototype things that we've been working on here. Um, one of them is these ear cufflings. So somebody was asking about um, making cufflings or making something for earbuds. So I've been doing some research on earbuds and, you know, with the charging case that they use, the little Bluetooth earbuds that you would stick in your ears, um, there's just no way we can make a ring to attach to them. And so we were playing around with the whole idea and one of our, uh, w one of our crew, Isaac, came up with this idea. So we threw a bunch of rings out and said, hey, let's start working on something. And he came up with this idea. So. Again, with all prototypes, we play with them for a while just to, you know, make sure that they are ergonomical and that they're doing the energy work, which they are. They're working for if you have earbuds, but they're also a great fashion statement, too. Um, anyway, so those we've been just playing with here this past week. One of the new products that's going to be released here this next week is the, the SITS Pyramid. It's basically an extension to the Mini Pyramid. And it is um, about 64 inches tall. So you can actually sit underneath of it. You can either get the extensions that go onto the mini pyramid kit that you already have, or else you can get it as the whole complete kit. And then it'll come in this really handy tube that we ship it in, it's PVC pipe that has the, the screw in. So it's a reusable um, container that you can actually just carry your, your pyramid assembly that way. So anyway, that one will be out here this next week, the SITS Pyramid. But um, there's this other fun thing that we've been working on here for some time, which is a quantum gridding tool. So we have a good friend out in L.A. County who we've been working on this tool for a little while. And this is a prototype. Um, it's going to be a bit different than this. Um, it'll be more clear and polished and refined. But this little guy right here, it's, um, again, the 60-degree pyramid, 60-degree angle there. 
and it has a regeneration coil in it. It has the golden light rods or the golden fire rods. In here it has a golden light rod within the coil and the golden fire infinite heart. Um, and then we'll probably put this uh, purple lapidolite from Angel Fire New Mexico in it. Just, I don't know why, but it just wants to be there. It has a lot of mica and such in it. Um, and then we might put some of the minerals here from the Black Hills of South Dakota mixed into these two. We're still playing with this, but this little guy is pretty phenomenal. You can actually create a, a triangular grid system to where <clears throat> it is holding the space of, of the um, field of neutrality, the quantum harmony, all that. So these quantum gridding tools are going to be pretty phenomenal. You can grid a state a country, a house with these little guys. So anyway, that was some of the, the announcements there. And I would like to start off with some of the questions from, from the email first. One of the questions was about the, the Hedica, the Triskelion, um, and what it has to do with, um, you know, other societies, other cultures. So, the the Hedica, as we call it, it's also known as a Triscale. Um, a lot of people mention that it's on the Temple of Grange in Ireland, as do we. So in Ireland, the Temple of Grange there, that is a pretty close representation of what the Triscalian is, where it has the one center spiral and it has the two legs. Now, when my sister Brenda channeled this in with the Elders Three, they called it um, how the energies of the sun and the earth spiral together with you. So earth, sun, you, that, that trinity and that spiraling of the energy. Um, so as far as the origins of this, that is an interesting one because when we first started making these things and getting them out into the world, People all over, because I would just make these by the hundreds and hand them out to people everywhere, even in parades. We go throughout Hedekas. Um, So with these guys, the people that had seen this symbol were coming up and saying, okay, well, I've been drawing that exact symbol since I was a kid or else, hey, look at this. I have a tattoo of it. Um, and then other people just had a remembrance of it. We found that on the East Coast, there were actually fishermen uh, deep sea fishermen that would use these uh, to put into their holding tanks to keep their fish alive longer. Um, so it was known out on the East Coast by the fishermen. Um, but throughout all the time, many people talked about how this was a symbol in Atlantis. And so many of us have a remembrance of Atlantis and this being on the healing walls, great big um, in Atlantis. So anyway, the the Triskelion, the Hedica, um, it's it's just a symbol that my sister channeled in before we saw the Triskelions. That is the symbol of the water elemental, which that water elemental we see as being older than the earth. It's one of those consciousnesses that came to the planet to assist with the planet and humanity. Water, Hedica. Um, so let's see. Well, the other questions this morning were about the golden fire and light wands. So we've had a lot of questions come up recently about not only the golden fire and light wands, but the tools in general on working with non-beneficial entities. Um, you know, not your ghost waywards, but these disincarnate beings who cause ruckus with people. So as we state with all of our tools, especially the golden fire tools, that they will help release and clear non-beneficial entities. Those that are ready to go, when they come into these fields, they go. They're connected to their soul, they go. Oftentimes, we run into people who don't wanna let them go, or else the entity itself doesn't wanna let go. At that time, it becomes more and more uncomfortable for that being because they're not in the same vibrational field as these tools. So it becomes more and more uncomfortable for that being so that they'll end up surfacing more. They'll end up starting to cause, you know, that that influence within the person. 
And so unless, you know, unless the person is consciously willing and ready to let go of that, and unless that being is gets tired of it and it just says, okay, I've had enough, let's go and goes, um, then it happens, you know, easier. But there is uh, on occasions, again, where we find where a person unconsciously and unknowingly holds on to them or else that entity will not let go. And that's when we need to do the consciousness work. We connect with that being. We bring in his soul. We just remind him of his divinity. And then he goes. So um, if you ever have the issue with that, that you know that they're there, it is simply just treating them as a spark of divinity seen within their heart, their soul's light, and then that's it. For the most part, they will usually just go then once they are reminded of their connection. Um, so that's all the mailing questions that we had. I had a couple of really long ones I'm just going to answer on email because it takes a little bit to uh, answer some of those. One of these days, we're going to publish a web page that has questions and answers on it here. All right, so we'll start over here on the questions tab. How much in time, golden fire ring, clean the memory on the molecular level of water? So when any of the tensor fields, when any water comes within the field, it begins to clear that memory of the water and begins to do the energetic transformations of water instantly. Um, with the generators, of course, the generators are more like a sunshine where the rings are more like a, a ray. So, of course, when you have the water within the field of a ring, it's going to do the work a lot faster than if you have the water sitting in your home and it's in the field of the generator. It's still going to be doing the the energetic work, the clearing work uh, of the memory of water, just as fast between the two. But for the physical restructuring, having the water within a column of a ring is much faster than a generator. Um, so yes, it will clear the memory of water on that molecular level as soon as water is exposed to those fields. And then also the question, is there a serious difference between the tensor ring standing in and out of the water in terms of duration? Tensor ring standing in and out of the water. Okay, so I'm not sure if I answered that question right already. Um, if you have water that is somewhere in your home within the field of the generator, it does take longer for that physical restructuring in the water versus when you have a glass of water that is sitting right within the column of the ring. Um, and again, we don't recommend putting the copper directly into drinking water because you can obtain too much copper when you take it orally, which is why we made the, the silver ring so that you can put it directly into the water. And then when you have the rings directly into the water, the silver rings, it is much faster. Um, and if I didn't answer that question right, please do um, ask again there. Can the golden fire and light wand be used for grounding? Yes, totally. Um, most all of our tools are grounding, but especially the wands where you go through the process of the Trinity breath like we did. And basically, when you're holding the wand and you're doing the Trinity breath, basically you're doing that Trinity breath for the wand as well when you're creating the column of light and you're doing that within your field. It is super grounding. Um, and then the question here, can you talk about the elementals today and how to best use? <clears throat> Let's see. I don't have the full set of elementals here. Um, my apologies. I'm slowly working on getting all the tools here, but we keep needing the tools. So I have to pull them off my desk here to take them back to the other shop for packaging. Um, the Hedica water elemental has been the most popular one for, for use. Um, not only with your water, you know, sitting it underneath of your water vessels, but also um, besides just water, people are using these for, for healing work. There's a lot of people who report doing healing with the, the Hedica elemental. Um, then all the other elementals such as uh, Plymella, Kalim, Chiselle, and the Ether. Um, 
the the wind, the air, the fire, and the ether. So wind and air, the plymel and the colleen, basically wind is simply an energy mover and it presents as wind because it's just an energy mover of air, but it's also an energy mover of fire, of ether, of water. So the plymella, as a mover of energy, it just presents as wind. Um, so to use any of the elementals, basically it's, they're simply like a connector, you know, for us consciously, <clears throat> excuse me, for us consciously to connect to the spirit of that particular elemental of the water. So this symbol for Hedica, the water elemental, it is just a way for me mentally to connect to that energetic aspect of water, that spirit of water. And so really that's truly the way for the elementals is they just allow us that conscious connection to them. But they also emit energy, especially the Hedica. So Hedica, this particular copper piece, um, it does emit energy. And you can see some of the GDV photo imaging we've done with this and with the Chisel, the fire elemental, and how they are emitting an energy. Um, and so you can use the physical tool, you know, for those purposes, which we have a lot written up on the Hedica, like promoting root growth, things like that. But the other elementals, it's basically a lot of people will hang them up. They'll just have them in their home, make little mobiles of them, um, place them on your altar, carry them with you as a reminder. So like, let's say we want to work with the, the air. We can, we can work with the air by consciously connecting to it, to it and, and just visualizing it clear in the air. Like if you have a place that's full of smog, um, fire, you know, if, if you're trying to start a campfire or you're trying to keep a fire out from consuming your house, connect, go to the heart, connect with the fire, the elemental, the spirit of the fire. And so, you know, there's a lot written up on the elders three too about connecting with these elementals um, because our bodies are, we, we carry those elementals as well of the ether, the fire, the ether has been the most elusive one. Um, you know, ether says, I have no name. I am everything. It is just the interconnecting of, of energy. Um, so yeah, to how to use the elementals, that really is a good question, Karen. Um, but truly it's, it's an individual experience on how to connect with that spirit of the elemental. Well, let's see. Hannah asks, I have an infinite light pendant and a golden fire regenerator. If I remember correctly, you said the pendant works with the higher self and the generator works on a lower level. How often do I need to reset, renew my intentions with these tools? And do they automatic, my, automatically upgrade as I do personally? So the difference with the infinite light pendant and the golden fire generator, they're both that higher vibration tool they're they're still connecting you to your higher self they're they're creating that higher space it's just that the infinite light pendant because of this regeneration ring that's made out of silver this this tool is just a higher connection than any of the other tools that we have um the infinite light pendant is just it, it's it's connecting us higher it's it's a cleaner pure more vib higher vibrational refined light and that is helping to carry our light in with um so these guys are of a of a different essence than than the golden fire generators are but they're still both very high working tools um and using your intentions with these tools uh, again you know when we're using our intentions in these fields it's basically kind of like speaking with our soul, our higher self, our consciousness. And so these tools, again, are simply just a way for us to mentally consciously interface with the bigger us. It's truly how these tools are. And so they're just an interface. They're just uh, uh, something for us to consciously grab onto. So when you're setting your intentions in the fields, it's like you're setting them into your field with your soul, your light. Um, do these automatically upgrade as I do personally? Yes. Um, that's the beautiful thing is that anybody can, 
pick up the infinite light pendant and it is going to work for them where they are at but this is such an expansive tool as is all the tools are such expansive tools that as we grow so does the tools the space is held and the space is opened further for us to step even further into that growth uh, James has a question how to clear electromagnetics from electric circuit in his house with the golden fire and light wand where exactly to place the column of light um, so the golden fire and light wand it is totally you can use this um, you know I have a lot of people who don't use their wands that'll just ask you know hey what can I do this if I'm what can I do with this if I'm not actively using it anymore because they've been able to integrate that column of light and do it without the wands and so I'll usually say first thing I'll usually say is put it on your electrical panel and just let it sit there and do its work for the physical but for anchoring the columns of light with your household electric yes just visualize this going through your light panel or through your electrical panel and so you're just placing that column of light that's grounding into the earth below your house and it's connecting up to source energy to creation and that is just creating that column of light when you walk through the process of using your wand to create the columns of light and then that'll just stay there because when we create these columns of light it's also bringing that golden fire energy which is you know what our plug-in discs are made with is the, the golden fire and so that is going to work with your entire electrical circuit um, the same as your plug-in disc would with the columns of light um, let's see and then sign on I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly I sure hope that I am um, Sinon asks, can golden fire generator change positivity in the air pollution and the air that affected by sounds, the intentions, and the emotions? So the golden fire generators can affect the air quality by what Slim Sperling and friends did with the harmonizer, which is basically a, a greater tensor field. The harmonizers are the harmonizer fields are similar to the golden fire or to the generator fields the tensor field generators so when slim and pals did some tests in denver colorado what they did was they took their harmonizers which are like well, like a generator a sphere and they played frequencies within there and they did tests over months and you can look this up on uh you know just look up slim spurling and he talks about it in some of his videos and some of the books that have been written for him um, about how it cleared air pollution. And then they also did this in Cairo, Egypt. Um, and then he worked with Drunville, Melchizedek, and some others also when they were doing some of the pollution abatement. And then there's also Organite Austin, Dwin Gardner, who wrote the New Science of Rain book. And he also used the tensor field generators and frequencies played within them to do work in the Austin, Texas area, not only clearing the air, but clearing, well, basically clearing the air because he was working with the, the layers of clouds and that stratosphere and clearing all of that gunk that was up there to create the more blue skies and your cumulus clouds. So um, using these different tools that are working out throughout the environment and using sounds and intentions will create changes in the environment um there's that's yeah definitely and i hear other people talking about that too about how they're able to you know use various tools not just tensor field generators but various tools to you know like cloud busters to totally clear environmental um, Jill asks, when do I hear, when I do hear heart space meditation, do I need to feel a difference in myself for it to work? No, Jill, I tell you the, the sacred space of the heart is an elusive thing. In the beginning, when I was doing the sacred space of the heart, I was doing it how Drunvalo Melchizedek taught it, which was very heady. 
it was like in your head how do you get to the heart space and 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 what it is and what you do there and it was always such a heady practice that i had a hard time getting there and so for the first year i always questioned whether i was in the heart space sometimes i even had to call my sister you know i was doing some something important you know and be like Am I in my heart space? <laughs> you know, because I yeah, I had such a hard time telling. So some ways to tell when you're in the heart space. For me, I feel a shift in my body. My my body actually shifts a little bit. For me, I also feel um that it it quiets the mind when you go into the heart space. You don't have all the talk. So just keep an eye on that too for for any of the chatter that would go on normally if you're in the head versus if you're in the heart space and another way to tell if you're in the heart space is like if you watch some of my videos where i walk us into the heart space my voice changes my demeanor changes um you know i get more calm my voice is slower and lower um so just being more aware of your body your internal, your emotions, um, everything. When you take those three breaths to go into the heart space, but do trust the process that you're getting in the heart space. So, yeah, and Jill, I'd almost suggest going through, we have a longer version of entering the sacred space of the heart on YouTube. It's an older version where we take a longer journey down into the core of the earth and we go out to Star Lake and we bring these energies together. And maybe that longer version might assist you the first time in going into that heart space. And because it gives the mind a little bit more um, to visualize, to see, to chew on when we go into the heart space. Um, so it's a longer version of entering the sacred space of the heart that you can find on our twistedsage.com YouTube channel. But the simpler and easier you can make it, the better. So that's like my sister. She doesn't teach three breaths anymore. Um, she's like, okay, take the breath. There we go. We're there. Um, so it's an exercise. But um, yeah, Jill, that's what I suggest is checking out that Sacred Heart video or entering the Sacred Space of the Heart. Uh, JTS. I have a hard time anchoring in my tools without physical having it with me. For example, when anchoring the golden light wand, what exactly should I be picturing? The golden light or the actual wand itself? So there are some people who you don't do as good of having this visual aid. I've, you know, I taught for a few years on using this as a visual aid of holding this out, seeing that column of light, but that isn't the way to do it for everybody we actually have another video out there um gosh i cannot remember which one it is but if you go to twistedsage.com resources there is light anchoring and environmental clearing i think is what the name is so on that light anchoring page under resources um there is a video where we actually instead of using the wand we're the one that becomes the column of light. So we picture ourselves, like let's say if you're going to do this at a water tower, picture yourself standing at the base or in the water tower or whatever, and you picture yourself standing there, and then you're doing that trinity breath, and you're grounding, you're connecting, you're becoming the column of light, and you're just having that intention of bringing in that golden light, that golden light rod, and that golden fire of the sacred heart. And you become that column of light. And then you step out of it and leave that column there. That really is a simple, easy way to do it. If this gets in your way of using this as, you know, doing that physically. And especially if you don't have that physical tool, like you're asking there, JT, is to just practice doing the visualizations of you becoming the column of light in the space that you want to do it intending the golden light to come in, intending the golden fire to come in, and then step out of it. Um, again, the more we can stay out of here when we're doing this work and staying in the heart and just trusting and making it simple and trusting it, um, 
because our intentions when we're in the heart space goes a long ways in creation. Jill asks, if Golden Fire and Light Wand sends a, sends a passed over pet spirit back to source, can they come back to be around us afterwards? So, yeah, we, we see the difference between a, a spirit and a wayward or a ghost. So we call um, a wayward as a being who was in the physical, who died. The wayward is, or ghost, is that part of them that hasn't crossed back over to source to check in with the soul, to go back to source, however you see that. So it is just here as the consciousness of, of the human. Um, so a ghost, a wayward is basically like the human, the ego, the personality, the, the emotions, everything. It, it, is, it is the person without the body that is running around here. So as soon as you cross them over, by say using the wand or, you know, however they cross over, um, you know, we have ghost busting 101. Also, if they come into the field of the tools, their soul will come in and take them across. So then at that time, that's where we would consider them to be a spirit. A spirit, as we would call it, was simply some is somebody who um, is connected with source, soul creation. And so, yeah, with like people, um, you know, some people don't want their, you know, their spouse to cross over, but yet they're so much more helpful when they cross over and they have that higher connection to, to source soul, then they can come in and they have that connection, that power, that ability versus just being a, um, you know, the, the ego based ghost wayward. So same with, same with your dog that, um, once it's crossed over, yes, it can totally come back in the spirit form. My daughter and I actually used to have a dog that was my dog when I was her age growing up, and it came to us. And so, um, pretty interesting stuff these critters are. Let's see, another question. If I get a regeneration ring to put on my big starburst, does it work as the wings of talk? Yes, so for those of you who have the original Starburst, all you need is any of the regeneration rings. It can even be the small guy, or it could be the, you know, the water regeneration ring, which is this one here. And using either one of those regeneration rings with your original Starburst, the larger Starburst that we used to make, um, and then just that intention that it is now the wings of top and that'll anchor it in. Can you recommend any tools and how to use them for soft injury healing? <sighs> you know, that's that's a tough one. For my forte is more bones and skeletal structure. My sister Brenda is the one who does, you know, she's the one who helps people bring through their own healing energies to heal themselves. You know, she, she walks you through using your light and to do that work. But, you know, for me, if, if I was going to work on something internal, soft tissue, whatever, um, organs, for me, what I would use would be, I would either use the golden fire and light wand, or else I would use a shaman's wand or a dragon wand. One of those three wands some people even get good, the good results with fairy wands. They're a golden fire wand too. So I would say, look at the wands and find which one of those resonate with you the most. There are some people who get great results with doing internal work. Uh, I was looking for a larger ring um, with just a ring. And preferably one of the heavier duty ones, which again, sorry, I don't have a lot of the tools here. You know, like the the heavy duty golden fire ring or the heavy duty regeneration ring. Um, you know, one of those two, because those heavier gauge rings, we feel it more on the physical. It just, it's the same energetics, but for the physical, I feel that it responds better on the physical when we're using a heavy duty ring. For that kind of work so um 
yeah, I'd say either look at one of the heavy duty rings or one of those wands. And basically, um, when you're looking for a tool, um, Jill, just simply, um, or so, sorry, Robert, um, when you're looking for a tool, Robert, just try to go into that heart space, picture them all right there, and just bring one of them into your field at a time. Just pretend on bringing one in and seeing how it makes you feel. See if it gives you those chills or if you sit upright, you know, things like that. It, see if you get a physical response because it's like muscle testing, kinesiology. Because when we bring in that tool, just the thought of it, it is still the energetics, the quantum field of that tool. So if you need to have a picture of them all sitting there on your, on your desktop um, or else just imagining them, of bringing that into your field and seeing how your body reacts, how it feels. Uh, let's see, and Jill asks, I have a golden fire and light wand coming soon in the mail. As you say, it's super grounding. Should I buy a golden fire coil as well for grounding? As before, you said the golden fire coil would be best for me at this time for grounding. You know, and Jill, if I did have, you know, if we did do a um, a reading session, then yeah, totally go with that. Um, I wasn't looking in to see what would be best for you when I mentioned the golden fire and light wand. Um, so I'll just see if I can take a look at that. You know, I think you're going to be just fine, Jill, using that golden fire and light wand and that Trinity breath. And, and, you know, that Trinity breath in itself is huge for grounding. And so is just that visualization of like, you know, your tailbone and it creating a root and anchor into the earth. Um, you know, there's a lot of really great ways for, for grounding, but yeah, the, the wand and you can even carry the wand where it is appendant. Um, you know, and then when you put your intention in there, when you put this on for grounding, that should be plenty. Um, and then Jill asks, how does silver infinite light pendant compare to Moldavite in terms of vibration, which is higher vibration? And would you recommend Moldavite? I wore Moldavite for probably two years straight in the very beginning because it is a high vibration. But I tell you, we... Um, where these tools are going, they are, all the tools that we create anymore have the frequencies and properties of all the plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms of this planet. Um, and all the different rays of light. But, um, you know, I personally feel that the majority of our tools are going to take you higher than any crystal it's not about the vibration but it is about the soul connection and working with your higher light that is truly where our tools i feel because they're working with our light so even if you didn't use our tools and you use just yourself your meditation your connections to your higher um, that's going to take you beyond where a crystal will but crystals are great support. I'm not down talking crystals one bit. I love my crystals. Um, but really for us to reach higher to our own higher connection, infinite light pendant is the way I go. Um, you know, and again, I have a lot of crystals that I still wear, but I have to ask them every day, which, you know, if I should wear them and a the majority of them. Yeah. They're, they're helpful and beneficial to me every day, even though I don't wear them every day. Um, Christopher, do you have a price estimate for the quantum grading tool? <laughs> no, I don't No, It's, uh, once we figure out time, energy materials on our finished piece, um, then we'll, then we'll know. I mean, right now it has a $54 coil in it. It has four of the rods. Um, I can't say exactly how much those will be. And then the time, energy materials put into the resins, the finishing, you know, the whole process, um, because we also have to take account of, of, you know, all the, the molds, the, the 3d prints. So we have to basically, you know, we, we always make a fair guesstimate on, on that entire 
time energy materials because then we do a time study and so once we have a product that we feel comfortable with beyond the prototype then we do a time study with it where we take into account every little bit of time that we put hands on into creating that tool and um, and then we have to multiply that by our shop hours what it costs to keep our shop open and so when we create our manufacturing price um, it is uh, and that's where it's at and that's why we don't do discounts a lot because and that's why we don't have wholesalers that get a discount you know they get a very small discount and because we try to keep our prices as close to time energy materials as possible so i'm hoping here in the next couple of weeks christopher that we will know the price of that quantum gridding tool the first 30 of them are actually going to 30 or 33 of them are going to la county um and donated as as a gridding project for la so Anyway, do the tensor field generators expand with the environment clearing CD from Slim, just like the harmonizers did? So if you put that environmental clearing CD frequency, which is the frequency of rain clouds, if you play that within the golden fire generator, You know, to me, it does not look like it would expand out innately if you just put your headphones in there and let it play. It still looks like it would be just within that two miles. To me, it looks like you need to hold your attention onto there for that expansion. Now, I had a guy who called me like two days ago, and he said that after working with his golden fire generator on a daily basis, He's got his to that field to extend out thousands of miles. Now, that's true with all of these fields that when we are working with our consciousness, we can consciously expand these fields greater than what the innate is. So Christopher, to answer your question, I feel that if you put the frequency in here, that it is gonna have the same innate field as the generator does with that with you working with it you can expand that field especially when your attention is held onto there it expands the field now if you work with that every day maybe like this other gentleman who he doesn't have to hold his conscious attention onto that field to keep that field expanded um, because so much of what we're doing anymore is not necessarily our conscious intent um, uh, stories but yeah, I noticed that the other day that I actually did some work with my sister and we went to look at somebody who, who I knew needed some clearing because they were using a lecture antenna to check tools and they were getting exact opposite uh, results. And this happens a lot with people who are muscle testing and they'll say, well, no, you know, this cell phone isn't good for us and or the cell phone tab and you know and things like that and when we check in we're like what well, something's not right here and we check in and see that they are being influenced by an outside energy um to receive those readings and so um this was a client and i was like gosh i really should go through and, and do some clearing work for him so that way he gets the right results with his lecture antenna and so I sat down with my sister a couple of days later to check in. I had already cleared him through my simple intent, um, unconsciously. So that just go. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to expound on your, your question there, Christopher, about um, expanding that field of the golden fire generator. After you start doing this stuff for a little bit, it becomes your higher conscious is the one who is holding the space because in order to expand this field out for beyond that two miles we have to consciously hold our intent there but once we do it for a little while it is our higher consciousness that is holding that intent there fun stuff um jts what tools do you recommend to uplift your energy keeps you happy and smiling throughout the day yeah that's a good question <laughs> you know happiness and joy have traditionally been an elusive thing to the human being as we all most of us know there's some people who that is not an elusive thing um, 
for me where I had depression the most majority of my adult life for the past you know 10 years I've been making the tools it's not like I've been happy for those 10 years um, I've been going through my own crap my own release my own triggers my own self everything work expansion watching realizing and um, shifting everything so there while I really feel that is some point in time that these fields we're going to be able to create something of that nature which is basically the unhappiness in the non joy is to me a disconnection and all the other energies that are muddled in with that disconnection from ourselves and so I would like to say that the closest tool that we have to bring in unwarranted joy and happiness would be the infinite light pendant because it brings that higher connection and it takes us above a lot of the muddle so yeah another thing is just hey, doing your work for now until we make that magic tool that can bring us all into that state of joy constantly um we need to do the work and that's it it's just being in the heart as much as you can trying to connect as much as you can and the tools just help you that the tools just help with the heart and the connection that, that's all they that's all they do is they assist us and in, in the work that we need to do um, if you have an infinite light pendant, do I need a golden fire coil for toroidal field or Merkaba? So um, the the inf the coil. Uh, I need to put all my tools right here on a rack in front of the camera. Um, so the coils, the coils do create that toroidal field, um, and so does your Merkaba. Um, the infinite light pendant you don't need for activating your Merkaba and you don't need any of these tools to create that torsion field, that toroidal field of your Merkaba. Um, you know, even our heart is a huge toroidal field. It's, it's, it's a electromagnetic generator about six feet across and it has the tube torus that, that energy flow, a true, a true tube torus. Um, but if you go to crystalmerkaba.com, on crystalmerkaba.com we walk you through or on our resources page on twisted sage it'll take you to the merkaba website um, there's simple easy ways where you reactivate your merkaba field and it in itself is an electromagnetic field that creates those toruses that creates the, the torus and um, so you don't need any of the tools in order to create a toroidal field around you uh, Chris, when wearing the copper ring, it's turning my skin green. Is that normal? Oh, yeah, I just finally took mine off. It was starting to turn my finger a little bit green. I forgot to put it on this morning. But, um, yes, it is completely normal for the body to absorb as much copper as it can handle. So when you are wearing a ring, you know, on your physical body, your body, your skin as a smart organ is going to absorb as much copper as your body needs and your body needs copper. And when your body stops, when your skin stops absorbing the copper because your body says, okay, we've had enough. And then it leaves that green patina on your skin. Now that is usually for most people, it is because of stress or dehydration that your skin stops absorbing copper and leaves the green on you. So like with your finger ring, <clears throat> just check that someday to see if, um, because that's for me, when I go out and I'll do shows and I'll do expos and talks and things, I don't drink enough water and my body is a little stressed. And so my, my fingers and my wrists would always turn green because of stress and dehydration. But then once um, I'm in normal conditions, I don't get that green patina on my skin. There's a small, very small percentage of people who actually have a, uh, a, a chemical reaction with the copper to where they just can't wear copper because it just, it just um, dissolves the copper basically. 
Um, but for the majority of us, it's stress or dehydration. Um, Ethan, I was using the rods to clear the energy field from one of my friends, and after I used the rods, I noticed one of the rods moved from the 90 degree angle into a wider angle, 110 degree angle, let's say. I brought back the form of one of the rods to 90 degree angle with my hands. By me doing this, did it change the energy of the rod? Oh, gotcha. So, again, I'm looking for a dowsing rod here, which I don't have. So if you're dowsing rod, the handle is at a 90 degree. And if that gets bent a little bit, it is okay. Yes, just by hand, just gently bend that back to the 90 degrees. Um, the dowsing rods, the golden fire and light rods, the dowsing rods are delicate. I mean, if you drop one, it, it can bend, um, you know, and that's, but it's as soon as you bend it back to that 90 degrees, you know, just a gentle bend. Um, it's fine. It, it's not going to cause any issues whatsoever. And, um, and there's actually people who will actually bend their rods just a little bit because they like to have more of a forward, um, weight onto the rods or a backward weight, mostly forward. And so that way your dowsing rod will reset back to the front position easier. So there are some people who give just a slight tweak downward to their rod and that won't affect anything energetically. Uh, James asks, uh, and thank you for answering. He says, uh, have you mentioned, you have mentioned in some of the videos that sometimes you had to sit with the problem of people and look, for example, the people's house, what caused the problem? What techniques do you use for getting the information and seeing the problem? So, James is kind of, um, to me, my sight, a lot of times I'll actually have visual sight when I'm doing remote viewing, um, that I'll actually have visual sight of, of the space or the energy. Um, so like my sister, Brenda, hers is a definite knowing she doesn't get as much visual stuff when she's looking at things. Hers is more of a knowing. Um, it, it's like bringing the information in and it bypasses her sight. For me, I get, you know, I get some of that knowing. And that's how mine used to be before I developed my sight is it was more of a knowingness. Um, <clears throat> but then the sight come in um, too with a lot of things. So, I mean, when I'm looking in to see like that gal who had the... Um, the 5G stuff that was radiating through her home, I see and feel. Like when I'm looking back to or looking at somebody who has an entity attachment, I see that dark field or that field with void of light around them, and then I'll see the entity. Usually I'll see his eyes, and I'll see that heart, that soul spark. Um, sometimes things are a lot more vivid. Um, so how to get to there it is something that when i was working with one of my first path partners melissa she could see vividly she could always see stuff and i could never see i was more in the knowing so every night before i went to bed i set my intentions into my merkaba field with my soul that hey please give me the downloads activations attunements whatever i need so that i can begin to see so i sat every night before I went to bed for years asking to see and it's opened up and every time I go through a dark night of the soul and I lose all my abilities I come back and I can see better every time so it's a process and it has been a process um, and I still feel using the tools is a great way to start opening all of that up because these tools are helping us open our gifts from the heart, from the soul. They help us open our gifts. Um, and everybody sees in a different way and everybody sees different bandwidths. Some people will see angels. Some people will see auras. Some people will see the color of sound. For me, for all I used to ever see was all the funny stuff, the entities, the, the dark stuff, because that was part of my path for that clearing work, for the bringing in the light 
that was what bandwidth of frequency that I need to see for my soul's path. So everybody's going to see just a bandwidth a little bit differently. Um, Christopher asks, in one video, you said that the old 50-degree pyramid grids were anchors for the 3D reality. Does that mean they are non-beneficial or copper pyramids of this kind are non-beneficial or hold us on a lower vibration? Okay, so what I talked about before was the, the pyramids in Giza, the, the Egyptian pyramids. So time and time again, I have remembrances of being a part of creating those pyramids, not necessarily building the pyramids, but of building the etheric energetic structure of the, of the, um, the ley lines of the geomancy aspect of the pyramids. So for what my understanding is, is, is that when we created that geomancy, the structure for those pyramids, um, when you are dealing with geomancy ley lines, that they are holding a physical reality in place on this earth. They are, these geomagnetic lines are working with the earth. They are earth lines. And so they are holding us in a certain physical reality. And then like the flower of life, which had the 19 rings on it, the flower of life was always pictured. And again, I'm looking for something I don't have here. The flower of life was always pictured as having two rings around it. It contained it. That flower of life contained the platonic solids of the third density physical reality. The platonic solids are the building blocks of physical reality. And so that flower of life that you would also find in conjunction with that whole grid system, it contained those platonic solids, the five of them, for the third density reality. But then as we are stepping into a higher physical density of reality, where physical things are vibrating at a higher rate, we are then finding that there are new platonic solids, not just the five platonic solids, but like our friend Fred Rusher, um, he's, uh, and he works with JJ Hertek, but he's discovered new platonic solids that did not fit within the framework of the flower of life. So that's why we make the fruit of life. We take the two outside rings off of it and allow the flower of life to expand to where those new platonic solids fit within there. And those platonic solids, again, are the foundation to physical reality. So the pyramids in Egypt and a lot of those old earth grids very much were holding this space for us in third density reality. Those grids are shifting. So it's not like the Egyptian pyramids are non-beneficial or all the pyramid molds that you see out there that are the Egyptian pyramid style. It's not that they're non-beneficial, but that they are, they used to be holding that density grid, but now then they are shifting. And you'll, you can talk to a lot of earth energy workers who talk about the shifting in grids and, and all the different crystal grids and all this stuff. And um, it's just basically that it is it is expanding. So not that those pyramids are non-beneficial right now and still holding us back. Those grids are shifting to and allowing us to expand. The 60 degree pyramids are just something that um, is not connected to the, the third density earth matrix. It never was. The 60 degree pyramids were connected to the Bosnian pyramid complex which is an intergalactic, interstellar, interplanetary grid system. Um, you know, they, they were working in a whole different way. And then now then the 60 degree pyramids that we're creating like this little guy, it isn't connected to the Bosnian pyramids anymore. Um, these 60 degree pyramids are connecting into that field of neutrality, that field of quantum harmony, universal peace. So anymore, the 60 degree pyramids that we're creating, all of our ascension pyramids, our new building we're making, is all connected into those higher fields of, of neutrality and such. Um, is there a tool that is effective for beating addictions? So our ascension chambers, um, we've had a lot of people that come through the ascension chambers and say that they, it cleared their addictions. Um, the work that Brenda has been doing here and that I've been assisting to people with is clearing the program of addictions out of the field. So humans carry this thing. And to me, when I look at somebody and we are clearing, um, 
we're clearing programs, we see the soul come in and pull this out. That's what we'll do for our meditation here in a minute, Jill, is we will clear the program of addictions. We'll hold the space and we'll walk through the meditation. So that's what we'll do for today's meditation. Clearing addictions. When you see the dragons, is it with eyes open in 3D or eyes closed in meditation? No, I've never actually seen the dragons with my physical eyes except for as they are in stone. So there are mountains, there are giant stones um, that I can recognize third eye as a dragon and see with my physical eyes and see that, yeah, that is a dragon. Um, so to me, when I see dragons that are creating the grid lines, the different geomagnetic lines, I see them, you know, especially those earth grid dragons, I see them as stone giant stone um but otherwise all the other types of dragons that we work with no i see them third eye uh, christopher does hooking a tool into the lobster clasp on the dragon wand add the energy to the wand itself or just amplify each other i don't feel an energetic connection just wondering what you see feel so anytime you are adding a tool like let's say we want to add a pendulum to this wand and we have for instance, we put an infinity down here. Anytime you bring tools close like that, no matter if they're physically connected or not, they're within their field and they can do some synergizing, harmonizing with each other. Now, like let's say with uh, what Christopher's asking about putting another tool onto the end of a dragon wand, um, no matter what, they're going to be in the field of each other and they may do something really cool and exciting or they may just slightly amplify each other or they're just synergizing, harmonizing and not making anything greater than the sum. Um, so as far as that, Christopher, and I was trying to look and see to what, what exactly you were doing there, but, um, you know, you might have to use some intention with that and, and, your intention to is not always what really happens. So you can have the intention of, Hey, I'm going to put this with this and it's going to do all these great things. Well, that can be your intention, but that might not be what happens. Um, and that happens to us all the time when we're trying to create a tool it, well, it's it, in the past. That's always the way it's been not as much anymore, but when we're trying to create a tool, I'm like, okay, this is what we want it to do. And this is what we want it to do, but it does something totally different anymore we're you know i feel like more in alignment so that when i say okay this is what we're creating in the etheric it comes true in the physical as well um so i'd say use your intention with it um just to play with that christopher um wish i had a better answer for you samson hey um massive ships ha shifts happening with the quantum heart space awesome my question is about chakra migrations and with everything, it seems natural to feel different in a good way. Just wondering how you and the team has been feeling this past weeks. I don't know. It's, it seems like a different theme every day. <laughs> Maybe the theme will last the same for a few days. Um, yeah, Samson, I, I don't know how to answer the question about, um, how we've been feeling this past few weeks. Like I say, it's, it's different all the time. I know that so many people out there are still going through a lot of stuff. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of release still going on. Um, you know, there's a lot of stumbling, but it's a beautiful thing. Um, it really is because th this is such a magnificent shift right now. And shifts always suck when you're in the middle of them. Or at least traditionally, because you're watching the shift, you're watching the stumble, you're not seeing that you get up and fly. You know, it's you're more focused on the, the act of stumbling than on what comes after or or what you're leaving, I guess would be a better way to look at it. Um, yeah, I don't know. You have to share some of your thoughts, Samson, for sure. 
Uh, Jill asks, I have a joint account here and my son is the one often asking the questions and has a skin scratching rubbing addiction. If so, I need to look in, please help him. His name is Andy. Um, Jill, I would say that would be a question for my sister. Um, yeah, and especially right now, being an hour into the webinar, I just, uh, nothing is really presenting and popping up. Um, for your son. But yeah, again, that's, you know, to me too, that's just kind of more of my sister's forte. Um, and she's, uh, again, she's at the elders three.com and on our website, she's the link on distance healing. All right. We're just going to take a few more questions cause we're running, running through our hour here. I'll have to talk faster and more concise. Robert, do you need to stand up to enter a calm of light or can one do it laying down or sleeping? No, you can, any way that you can do the calm of light is perfect. For me, all the energy work that I do, I do better personally standing up, but I don't know too many people who do. Um, but for me personally, when I do all my energy work, I like to stand up. Um, it's just easier for me. So whatever is easier for you. And Hannah, do you have a list of resources or recommended energy workers in the Black Hills area? Hey, Hannah, you must be local. Awesome. Um, no, I don't. There are, I'm trying to think, there is a Southern Hills, there was a little Southern Hills book that had everybody in the Southern Black Hills that were practitioners of all kinds and varieties. Um, Man, and I cannot think of a website to send you to. We have some Facebook pages like Black Hills Consciousness Network um, that if you're local, you can get onto that Facebook page and you might find some people there. Um, and I know, nope, I'm sorry, I don't have a better resource there for you, Hannah. Uh, Katrina asks, I think you mentioned using the tools with water. Can you talk about that? Does it structure water? What experiments have you done regarding this, if any? I would refer you to the gals at Dancing with Water, the new science of water. We actually make the water rings that we create and we sell, we make for these guys at Dancing with Water. Um, so yeah, what the water rings are doing is they, you know, everything from putting such a high spin rate to the water that it oscillates in and out of physical reality, basically creating ormus with your drinking water. We've actually also had the gentleman who, um, is the guy who the gdv photo imaging guy krishna he's also done work with like a moto's water and with oils charged by our rings and with all of those they go off of the measurable charts with gdv um so there's some pretty phenomenal things with structuring water but yeah i would totally refer you to the gals at dancingwithwater.com um, Ronald, is there any significant spiritual or metaphysical meaning when one of my tools was dropped on the floor? Hmm. Good question. And I don't know about that. Um, I'd say to go into your heart space about it and then relook at it and not get too caught up in your mental with it of any because that's the thing about reading into you know anything is just to be in your heart about it and see what you feel and not necessarily um you know think about it have i tried to use a tachyon eyes item yeah jill actually he when i started out with twisted sage studios um, before I started making energy tools, I was playing with like the Omega wands and, um, those were like a tachyonized energy tool and they were fun. So I tried like the different wands from all over. I bought wands from everybody who was making them from Canada to Taiwan to the U S to everywhere. And a lot of them felt really funny. Um, the Omega wand was the only tachyonized wand that I ever, you know, resonated with. Um, going back over here, I'm just going to check the chat real quick. We're, I think we're going to be done with the, the questions tab there. 
um, again, you're able to email in questions for, for the next time too, if, if you don't get questions in here today. I'm just gonna run through the chat real quick. Um, and I hope you guys are reading the chat because people are talking about some fun stuff like Christopher using the headache. Uh, uh, let's see, Christina asked, what do you suggest to stop EMFs from Wi-Fi's? Golden fire generators, any size of golden fire generator. Um, it is perfect. And then Christina also asked, do the plugins also stop the EMFs from Wi-Fi's? Nope. The plugins are only going to be working for your actual household electrical system. So that is, you know, like your outlets 18 inches out, you know, your lights 18 inches out, all of your electrical line, as well as your meter box or your fuse panel uh, that have that five and a half to six foot field of non-beneficial electromagnetic energy. That's all that the disks are going to be working on there. They're not going to work with um, anything else like a Wi-Fi router that you would plug into the electrical. It won't work with that. Um, see now, thank you for the pronunciation of your name. Awesome. And thank you for being here all the time too, see now. And I appreciate it. Um, Melody, I have a phone tab on my phone, but I get pain in the holding the phone. Any suggestions? How much is postage to the UK? Um, gosh, we actually have a new postage calculator on the website now. It's right at the cart. So if you punch in your stuff, we actually have three different choices on international ordering. We have UPS, Priority USPS, and First Class USPS. We usually recommend not to go first class through um, international, especially right now with all this going on, because um, we're you know, a lot of the first class packages are getting delayed or stuck somewhere along the way. And with first class, even though it is the cheapest shipping, we can't track it after it leaves the United States. Um, but uh, let's see, what was the other question? Okay, about having a phone tab on your phone, but you still get pain holding the phone. Um, time and time again, we run into times where people's own unconscious fear, any of that stuff can override the tools. Kind of like when you anchor a column of light into a cell phone tower, it is beneficial for everybody in the area unless they look at it and they're like, Ooh, that thing's harming me then they have overridden the beneficial energies of that tower. So that's what we find with cell phones often is that it goes into a person, they have the, the doubt with it, and then that overwhelms it, that changes things so that, um, you know, because we're powerful creators, especially out of fear, even unconscious fear. So what we taught people in workshops before we made cell phone tabs, Go into the heart space, send unconditional love into your phone, then you can muscle test and you'll muscle test that your phone is then beneficial. Just one of the ways that you can override that. So if your cell phone is causing you issues and you have a cell phone tab on there, go into the heart space, know that you are a powerful creator, send unconditional love into your phone, and that'll switch things. So that'll switch things between the mental, the conscious, and that'll also add the extra um, oomph to the cell phone tab. All right, more people from everywhere, California, Philippines. <laughs> Nancy. Um, then just more comments, like the infant light pendant is really the skyrocket, as you said before. See now, and I'm glad you're finding that. Um, and then Brooks says, yes, the golden fire generator on my Wi-Fi made a big change. I also put selenite inside of it for a boost. So yeah, that question about the Wi-Fi routers. If you even have those newer Wi-Fi routers that are super funky, um, that's why I suggest to a lot of people is just put in your golden fire generator near your router. That way it's between you and there. And yeah, totally adding other crystals is a great thing to do to your generators. But definitely the generators, number one tool I usually suggest for people. Um, let's see, 
And then Brooks says, yes, I said I don't believe it when the Golden Fire Generator immediately quieted my Wi-Fi and the loud noise popped back up. I had to reset my intentions before it worked again. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke, for sharing that. All right, you guys. Let's do some work. Let me get a drink of coffee. Let you guys start settling in for a meditation here. We are going to work with the soul and have the soul go through and clear the program of addictions. <clears throat> All right. So as we begin any meditation, it is from the heart space. So put your attention onto your physical heart, your light, your soul's fire within the heart. Breathe in that energy of earth, that light of the earth, the heart of the earth, right up into your heart, bring it up through your feet and into the heart. And just feel that connection with the earth. Next, we connect to source, soul, creator, God, central sun, however you see and say that. Breathe in that energy of creation into the heart. The third breath, bringing both those energies together within you. Mix them together within the heart and expanding them out into that column. So you are a column of light that is grounded, connected, and in the heart. Expand that light through all of your cells. You are just a light, bright being. Now then, let's imagine your soul standing before you. For me, I see the soul as this golden light body that's how i see the soul however you see it doesn't matter however you see it is perfect your soul stands before you it is our intention of clearing programs we don't direct it we just allow the soul to weave in through our field through our bodies through our being Clearing programs that no longer serve. Specifically, this program of addiction. To me, I see it as usually this dark pocket out in our field, kind of out in front of us, about head height and higher. Just asking the soul to wrap that up, transform it, release it. And all those little cords that attach to all those other emotions. So having the soul go through, asking the soul to go through and clear all emotional traumas connected to addictions. This works throughout all time, space, dimensions, incarnations, realities, everything that we are. We're not doing it for just us in this lifetime. We are doing this for our entire being. So again, just allowing the soul to go through, disconnect, transform, traumas, emotions, connected to the program of addiction. And all the sub-programs related to addiction, such as self-worth, Being able to stand in your power. Being able to speak your truth in a good-hearted way. Awesome. All right, my friends. Until next time.
Thanks for being here. And we'll see you again.